This is Kathy Knipfer for Nursing 2203, recording the pediatric lecture for Chapter 31. For the infant, biologic development occurs in a head-to-toe and a center-to-periphery sequence. There are also proportional changes. The infant gains 5 to 7 ounces each week. The birth weight is doubled by age five months or six months. Birth weight is tripled by the age of one year. The height increases by one inch per month for the first six months. And as you know, growth occurs in spurts rather than a gradual pattern. As the infant systems mature, there's a slowing of the respiratory rate and abdominal breathing continues. There are certain factors that predispose the infant to respiratory problems. The heart rate slows. It increases with inspiration, decreases with expiration, which is called sinus dysrhythmia. Systolic blood pressure increases in the first two months. Diastolic decreases during the first three months, then it increases. Hematopoietic changes occur. The fetal hemoglobin is present for the first five months and it gradually declines. That results in a physiologic anemia at three to six months. Eventually the infant produces their own red blood cells. The head size increases by 33% in the first year. Other systems mature like the digestive system, the immunologic system, the renal system, and also there's a differentiation in the nervous system, thermal regulation becomes more efficient, and there's an increase in auditory acuity and perception. Let's talk about the fine motor development of the infant and grasping objects. They begin grasping objects relatively early, as early as one month. Uh, they will grasp objects at age two to three months. By age five months, they're able to voluntarily grasp an object. They'll be able to transfer objects between hands at age seven months. The pincer grasp, which would be demonstrated by picking up a raisin, would be developed at age 10 months. They can remove objects from containers by age 11 months and can even build towers of two blocks by 12 months of age or one year. This image demonstrates grasping. Now let's discuss gross motor development of the newborn infant. Regarding head control, the full-term newborn can momentarily hold their head in midline. They cannot lift their head to prevent suffocation like on a soft surface. So that's why it's important that parents be taught to lay the baby on their back. The infant can roll over from abdomen to back at age five months. They can roll over from back to ab abdomen at age six months. And they should be able to sit without support at age seven months. They can move from prone to sitting position at approximately age 10 months. With locomotion, there's a cephalocaudal direction of development. The infant crawls at approximately age six to seven months. That's with their abdomen on the floor. They creep around age nine months, and that's where they're on their hands and knees. They should walk with assistance by age 11 months and walk alone by one year. With psychosocial development, the infant has to develop a sense of trust. Uh, the infant trusts that their comfort needs will be met, and that's established through feeding and stimulating the infant. If gratification of needs is delayed, then they develop mistrust. There are also some social tests that occur. They begin to reach out to others by grasping. They may bite. Uh, there may be a conflict of biting the mother's breast, causing her to be upset, or soothing painful gums due to teething. When we talk about cognitive development, we think of Piaget. 
and during the sensory motor phase from birth to age one month the infant uses reflexes from one to four months they develop primary circular reactions which are the beginnings of voluntary acts that elicit specific responses at ages four to eight months they have those secondary more developed circular reactions their more developed responses and they progress from simply grasping to maybe holding to shaking and varying levels of shaking of an object by six to twelve months they imitate things such as sounds, simple gestures they play and get pleasure from per performing a mastered act they demonstrate affect which is that outward manifestation of emotion and feeling and then there's coordination of secondary schemas where they build on their foundation of behavioral achievements and they add new intellectual skills with the development of body image the concept of object permanence is acquired the development of body image parallels sensory motor development anesthetic and tactile experiences are the children's first perceptions of their bodies by the end of the first year children recognize that they are distinct from their parents this child is enjoying the image in the mirror with social development attachment develops after the infant is able to discriminate the mother from others and they achieve object permanence reactive attachment disorder RAD is a form of extreme insecure attachment with separation anxiety the infant becomes aware that the parent can be absent and this occurs between the ages of four and eight months stranger fear is prominent between the ages of six and eight months and of course language development begins with crying infant play is a component of social development it's primarily narcissistic and it revolves around their own body at birth to three months this play is undifferentiated and global at three to six months there's more interaction they begin to play alone with a rattle or a soft toy or with someone else by four months they will laugh aloud they'll show preferences for specific toys they may recognize mirror images and smile and vocalize to it by six to twelve months play involves sensory motor skills this would be demonstrated by things like peekaboo, pat a cake they also might imitate verbalization and gestures an infant's temperament is basically their behavioral style there's a strong biologic component that can be modified by the environment and the family there are ways to evaluate temperament there's a revised infant temperament questionnaire RITQ this focuses on sleeping, feeding, playing, diapering, and dressing. And there's also one available for early infancies, the EITQ. When describing temperament, instead of using the word difficult, the nurse would probably be best to use intense, less predictable, instead of difficult because that has a negative connotation. with coping with concerns related to normal growth and development we have that fear of separation and the fear of strangers the best approach for the nurse to take is to talk softly meet at eye level maintain safe distance and avoid sudden or intrusive gestures when assisting parents to select alternative child care arrangements we should encourage parents to check out state licensing agencies and then when setting limits and discipline for the infant and toddler use of time out in a play yard versus sitting them in a chair is better because of their abilities we don't want parents to be overly concerned if a an infant continues to suck their thumb um, we also 
See recommendations for the use of pacifiers. Uh, it's recommended that there be limited use during the first six months and then may be weaned from it during the next six months. It seems to have a protective effect related to the sudden infant death syndrome. With teething, you can assess number of teeth or the normal number of teeth for a certain age in months by taking that age in months and subtracting six. And that applies to the first two years. Some things that we can recommend as far as handling the gum discomfort, we could tell them to use those cold teething rings. We could also tell them that topical anesthetics are okay as long as they're applied properly. They also could use acetaminophen or ibuprofen to a limited amount, not for a lengthy period. For infant shoes, probably the most important thing is that they be, the soles be flexible, soft, and that the shoes fit properly. Of course, we want to promote optimal nutrition during infancy. During the first six months of life, human milk is the most desirable complete diet. Solid foods are not recommended before four to six months. During the second six months, rice cereal is introduced. It's often recommended first because it's easily digested, it has a low allergenic potential, and it can be mixed with breast milk or water. After six months of age, 100% fruit juice can be added to the cereal, and that provides vitamin C that's helpful for iron absorption. White grape juice is good. It may be better absorbed and cause less GI distress than with other juices. When introducing solid foods, you of course would want to introduce them when the child is hungry. You want to try to feed them with a spoon after a little bit of breast milk or formula to improve interest and place the spoon on the back of the tongue. Formula should not be mixed with food because they need to experience those new tastes. When weaning from breast or bottle, you would wean to the cup. Uh, this should be individualized for each child, but it's usually in the second half of the first year. If you're weaning from the breast before five to six months of age, you would wean to the bottle instead so that the sucking needs are met. It's a gradual process. You would replace one feeding at a time, with the nighttime feeding being the last one to be discontinued. Now let's talk about sleep and activity of the infant. Sleep patterns do vary among infants. By age three to four months, nocturnal sleep lasts nine to 11 hours, while breastfed infants awaken more often, especially during the night. By the time they're one year old, they often are only taking one to two naps a day. Infants are naturally active, so we would want to discourage the use of walkers, swings, and play pins. At least minimize their use because they may restrict movement and exploration. They also might hinder gross motor development. Now let's talk about promoting dental health. Cleaning should start when primary teeth erupt. A damp cloth can be used at first and then a soft bristled toothbrush. And one would use water and only a smear of toothpaste. Toothpaste with fluoride should be used at six months. And then to prevent dental caries, we would not want the bottle to be propped, no milk in bed, and no fruit juices. This image shows normal tooth eruption with the associated month. The CDC has recommended immunization schedules for persons age 0 through 18. The nurse should know what those recommendations are and what the time frames are. And this would be for common immunizations such as hepatitis A and B viruses, diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis, and polio. Also, the nurse should know about routine immunizations 
and recommended time frames for measles, mumps, rubella, pneumococcus, haemophilus influenza B, varicella, and influenza. The recommendations from the CDC are in your textbook. You should also be familiar with recommendations for selected immunizations for selected groups of children like the rotavirus and the human papillomavirus. You should also be familiar with reactions, contraindications and precautions, and basic administration. How would you report an adverse reaction after administration of a vaccine? Well, you would use the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System, VAERS, and then we give information to parents and guardians of children being vaccinated, and that's through the Vaccine Information Statement, or BIS. Motor vehicle accidents are the leading cause of accidental death in children. It's important that parents receive proper instruction on car seats. It should be in the back seat of the car. Uh, parents should be taught about hyperthermia. Overdressing can cause hyperthermia. And then there are other things the nurse can do in his or her role in injury prevention. Ensuring safety in the home. Teaching infant CPR. And there are others. Let's look at some special health problems that occur in infants. One is colic or paroxysmal abdominal pain. This occurs in 15 to 40 percent of all infants. It's manifested with loud crying with the legs drawn up to the abdomen. It could be due to too rapid feeding. It could be due to overeating, swallowing excessive air, improper feeding techniques, even emotional stress or tension between the parent and the child. Maybe central nervous system immaturity, parental smoking, or just overstimulation. So first, to manage the problem, you would look for an organic cause, such as a sensitivity to cow's milk or a GI problem. So what would you assess if you suspected colic or if the patient was having colic? You might assess diet the diet of a breastfeeding mother, the time of day when the infant cries, the relationship of crying to feeding, who's around when the patient cries, is there any smoking around the baby, what are the activities of the mother before, during, or after the feeding, what are the characteristics of the cry, and then what measures were used and were they effective. Also, you might look at patterns of stooling, voiding, or sleeping. And then you might ask for a return demonstration of feeding. What we do know about colic is that it usually disappears around three to four months, but we don't want to make guarantees. We do want to reassure the parent that nothing is wrong, that they're not doing anything wrong. We want to be empathetic gentle and reassuring in our attitude. We also want to look for red flags that parental frustration levels are out of control. Another special health problem in infants is failure to thrive or growth failure. It's diagnosed when we look at the weight that falls below the fifth percentile for the child's age, weight for length. It's also considered a problem if there's a persistent deviation from the established growth parameters. It could be caused by multiple factors. It could be a combination of infant organic disease, dysfunctional parenting behaviors, subtle neurologic or behavioral problems, and disturbed parent-child interactions. But the bottom line is they're just not getting enough calories. Failure to thrive could be caused by any factor that leads to that inadequate caloric intake. When the nurse assesses the infant, the nurse would take a complete history, take a dietary intake history, perform a physical examination, complete a developmental assessment, do a family assessment, assess the perceived food allergies, and parental height. 
As a result, you would provide ketchup calories, vitamins, supplements, high calorie foods, and drinks. Basically, you're fixing the underlying cause. The prognosis depends on the degree of the deficiency and how long it continues. Another special health problem in infants is SIDS, Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. It's defined as sudden death of an infant younger than one year that remains unexplained. There are risk factors for SIDS. They are low birth weight, low APGAR scores, recent viral illness, siblings of two or more SIDS victims, male sex, Native American and African American. Protective factors for SIDS include breastfeeding, pacifier use, and sleeping on the back instead of sleeping prone. With care of the family after a sudden death, of course an investigation occurs, the parents should be allowed to say goodbye, and then counseling should take place so that they can work through their emotions and that should begin right away. The Back to Sleep Front to Play campaign that began in 1992 to help prevent SIDS has resulted in an increase in positional plagiocephaly, which is a molding of the cranium. Diagnostic evaluation is completed through physical examination, but to help manage this and help prevent it is to alternate the head position of the infant nightly and avoid prolonged placement in car seats and swings, and it's important that the infant have tummy time for 30 to 60 minutes per day. Uh, in more serious cases, a skull molding helmet might be used. An example of an apparent life-threatening event, ALTE, is an aborted or near-miss SIDS. Diagnostic evaluation would include obtaining detailed descriptions of these events, potential home monitoring, and the use of respiratory stimulating drugs such as caffeine. So therapeutic management could include theophylline, caffeine, home apnea monitors, family support, as well as CPR training. And that concludes this PowerPoint presentation.